Hi, my name is Jim, and I'm here to help you prep and strategize for the reading portion of the SAT. Here's a question that I bet you already know the answer to. How do you ace the reading section? You guessed it, by reading, reading often, and reading a variety of texts. With all the reading you've done throughout your school career, from Dickens to the structure of DNA to the Declaration of Independence, you've already laid down a strong foundation for success. But it's not always about quantity. What we'll cover here today is a strategy for how to critically read the passage-based questions on the test, which is just as important as understanding the passage itself. Here's a pro tip. The SAT has a lot of useful information embedded in the directions and the questions. For example, at the beginning of the reading section, you'll find the following directions. Each passage or pair of passages below is followed by a number of questions. After reading each passage or pair, choose the best answer to each question based on what is stated or implied in the passage or passages and in any accompanying graphics, such as a table or graph. How is this information useful? I'm glad you asked. The key words in the instructions are stated and implied. When something is stated, it's explicitly set forth and declared as fact. When something is implied, it's indicated or suggested without being directly stated. For our purposes, it speaks to the main idea of the passage. For example, let's say the passage is about going to the beach, collecting shells, swimming, and hanging out with friends. If the question asks for what is implied, the answer choice that mentions collecting shells is wrong. However, if the question asks for what is stated, the answer choice of collecting shells is correct, because collecting shells is explicitly stated. Now, the questions that ask for what is stated are the specific detail questions. The ones that ask for what's implied want you to dig deeper for the main idea. Once you recognize which type of question it is, stated or implied, you can eliminate some answer choices right off the bat. You don't even need to read the actual passage just yet. In this example, I'm only going to show you the question and the answer choices without ever pulling up the passage just to prove how strategic you can be when recognizing you're being asked about what is stated or implied. In lieu of the written passage, I'm going to paint a picture of what the passage is about. William Lyon Phelps, distinguished Yale author and lover of literature, delivers a speech in 1933 about the importance of building your own personal library. Phelps says when the books are yours and not borrowed, you have the freedom to mark them up at will, be surrounded by their decorative beauty, and return to them like their old and intimate friends. So now let's bring up just the question stem. All of the following can be explicitly answered by the passage except. Okay, so we'll walk through the answer choices in a moment, but for now we just need to know that three of them are going to be details that were stated in the passage explicitly. The question asks you to find the exception to what is explicit or clearly stated. So we want to find the answer choice that's an implied question. Let's start by eliminating those answer choices that focus on specific details. Choice A, why does the author think books should be read twice, is asking us a question about the author's opinions or beliefs, which may be the main idea. So let's keep A in mind while we review our other choices. Answer choice B, when should a person begin building a private library, is specific but may have been implied as the author's opinion. Let's keep B in mind as well. Answer choice C, why does the author feel it is a good idea to mark up books, is so specific that it must have been stated in the passage. Let's cross out C. Answer choice D asks us for particular information, which doesn't leave much room for interpretation, meaning it probably wasn't implied but rather stated. So far in this question, we're leaning toward answer choice A or B. The strategy of differentiating between stated and implied statements really helped us narrow things down. However, here's where I tell you that you do need to read the whole passage to have a real shot at confidently picking the correct answer. But for our purposes now, I'm just going to bring up an excerpt from the actual passage to help get us across the finish line. Let's start with answer choice A, which asks, why does the author think books should be read twice? Let's look at a few lines before and after the author mentions reading books. This should let us know if the author ever explicitly states why books should be read twice. A good reason for marking favorite passages in books is that this practice enables you to remember more easily the significant sayings, to refer to them quickly, and then in later years, it's like visiting a forest where you once blazed a trail. 
You have the pleasure of going over the old ground and recalling both the intellectual scenery and your own earlier self. Well, that was lovely, William. But what does it mean for us? From what we just went over, at no time does the author ever explicitly state that books should be reread. Instead, the author implies that books should be reread because returning to them is like visiting a forest where you once blazed a trail. So, answer choice A is exactly what we were looking for. You should now be able to see that reading the question carefully is key, and understanding when it's asking for what's stated versus what's implied is crucial to cracking the reading portion of the test. Now that you've learned about main idea questions, make sure you solve some of the many practice problems available throughout this course.